What it do, Flight Crew? FTC. Flight Team, stand up! Once again, it's April. FTC, please stay faithful. We got Jimmy Otto on his plate. Deserves an award. Rookie of the Year. Most Improved Check player. it out. Sixth Man of the Year. Defensive Player of the Year. The Most Valuable Player. The Best Shooter of the Year. Curry. That's not a real NBA award. Oh, it isn't? Dude, I don't know why I thought this whole time I was an award that Curry's just been winning. Like it's like a layup, so it's like nothing to really... That's crazy. Make it an award ASAP. How did I not an award? But it would be cool if it was. In fact, if there was an end-of-season award for the NBA's best My shooter, thing is, is that how would you determine it? Because you can't really go off of like percentage-wise because like you have a... If you, let's say, have a bench player that averages... Three minutes a game, he's only shot about 25 shots the entire regular season, 82-game regular season, and he actually shot pretty good of all those attempts he attempted. He did almost about an 80% plus, so I obviously can't be determined on that. And then the scoring champion is determined on points per game, so it can't be that. So I'm wondering how would this all boil down to. That's actually a, a good-ass smart idea. Because Curry, that, like, man, I, man it's, it's such because I know for a fact the NBA is going to add some type of award like this in the future. They already did it with like past awards. Like they wasn't even doing awards before. Did you even know the All-Star game wasn't even existing until like, what, the 80s, I think, or 70s, if I'm not mistaken? So it's like imagine like so many players that missed out on just those accolades alone. You know, like Curry literally, by the time they probably put this award in, unfortunately might be retired. So he could probably miss out on like seven times. Who would be the winner this season? He could have won. Maybe Duncan Robinson, Luke Kennard, Grayson Allen, Steph Curry. Steph Curry well, only. According Steph to some advanced metrics, there's actually one clear winner here. Crafted NBA, a site that curates some of the most interesting and insightful NBA metrics, has a stat called shot quality. It's a unique metric that uses multiple variables like spacing and shooting efficiency and converts a player's shooting ability and shot selection into a point scale from 1 to 100. Really? 1 being the worst? Don't even think about putting up a shot. 100 being the best. Feel free to shoot any shot you'd like. Among point guards, Kyrie Irving has been one of the best shooters in the league this season with a shooting quality rating of 86.7. Among shooting guards, Sam Merrill of the Cavaliers has been the best shooter with a rating of 89.5. Duncan Robinson has been the best shooter at power forward. Sam Hauser has the highest score of any power forward this season. And among centers, it is Carl Anthony Towns who has been the best shooter with a shot quality rating of really? 80.1. Now, See, rating <laughs> this is where it's just going to become just straight BS, man. Because, like, come on, bro. This, the best shooters of this season, like, who the fuck is this nigga right here in the, in, in the second slot right here, bro? I think that may have been my history teacher. That man gave me a C, so I'm not even tripping on But it's like, bro... All jokes aside, like, bro, see, this is where it's going to get you. How are you going to determine this award? You obviously can't base it off of this stat. You got Sam Hauser, Sam Merrill, and even no disrespect to Duncan Robinson. Duncan Robinson is a cool, consistent casual, but he should not be in the same room in the same conversation as the Kyrie's and the Cats um, and, you know, PG's on his list and everything and Clay. So, of 100 is virtually unattainable. This means you're like a perfect shooter, and that's not even possible. Unless your name is Steph Curry. Yeah! The shot quality metric has been the oh, best this made me happy. He's actually on the number. I was like, I didn't even see the number two part. I thought, yo, this made NBA me happy. NBA this season with a shot quality rating of 100 out of 100. Wow. Making him, in a landslide victory, the 2024 NBA Sharpshooter of the Year. Wow. But why stop here? Let's create some other NBA awards and find the rightful winners of the 2024 NBA season. Right. Very interesting uh topic. Today's oh. battle is fat and fantasy. Nuke two head draw. Fastest Woohoo! That dunk again was crazy. Anyway, fastest cut edit this play was of a sponsor. The hang Thank time, you. the energy, the reactions. I mean, this has got to be the best play or singular moment. <laughs> no, how did he get the 4K version of the zoom in? Yo, I look mean, at Sex the Gods! Yo! Oh! <laughs> Man, this is an example of biting your tongue. When you're not supposed to say something you're supposed to say, yo, that is hilarious. Best play or singular moment this from this man? NBA season. It was so good that it should have gotten some award or something. He did throw it in, though, to be fair. The twenty twenty. Because anybody, I, let's respect that, I can even do that type of quote-unquote dunk because it's just throwing it in. I can't so. believe that just happened. Play of the Year award goes to Anthony Edwards for his dunk over John Collins. But we've got a lot of other awards to hand out here today. So let's bring them out and see our nominees.
Our next award is the Kobe Bryant Get It Out The Net Award for the player who is least likely to pass the ball once he gets it in his hands. That's crazy. And our nominees this season are, of course, Michael, the possession ends here, Porter Jr., Cam Thomas, <laughs> Jeremy Grant, Clay Thompson, and Cam Whitmore. Now, the eye test alone will tell you more often than not, when these guys touch the ball, their teammates have essentially two options. Crash the board or get back on D. Damn, you know what's crazy now? Because, you know, I'm a Drew Warriors fan over here. So, you know, when we watch enough of these highlights, we kind of peep. Like, I do notice that. I mean, like, for granted, Clay gets the ball in the perfect time slot. So, like, he'll come off of a screen or he'll get the ball when he has, like, a two to three second interval to just chuck up the shot, basically, or just do something where you can create a shot off the dribble. But it is actually funny the way he's breaking it down because I've rarely seen Clay Thompson pass. I don't even think out of my entire time since I've consistently reacted to NBA highlights since, what, 2019? I've literally seen Clay pass the ball no more than five fucking times, which. In a way, I'm kind of like, should I be really upset about that? Because he's a pure shooting guard and he's a pure shooter. He's not anything else. He's not athletic like that. He doesn't have handles. I have better handles than him with one toe finger. Mason. But just jokes aside, bro, like, he, he's just, he, is that really his ball game? And so that's an interesting way to, like, you know what I'm saying? He broke this down. But there's actually. But for MPJ, it's no excuse. You have Murray and then you have Jokic on your team and he still has this, um, um, uh, on player percentage where he doesn't pass way, the ball. We can last determine year. the rightful You're not the main character, buddy. Award. How often did a player touch the ball versus how often did they pass the ball? Are you receiving passes and swinging the rock or are you pulling up whenever the ball touches your hands? And as you can see, all of our nominees touch the ball way, way more than they pass it. But there's one player that is head and shoulders above everyone else in this award. And that is Cam Whitmore. Among players who get at least 20 touches per game, Cam Whitmore is the only player in the entire league where the possession ends with him more than half the time. That's insane. For perspective, Michael Porter Jr. Why do Victoria. Lakers fans always talk about that Whitmore, dude? I've been noticing that sometimes on like social media. Like, what's so special about he's supposed to be on a Lakers fan? For not getting rid of the ball. And when he gets the ball, he passes it up 62% of the Damn, time. Damn, Kawhi's up there? Compared to Whitmore's... Bro, imagine Bojan and, like, bro, Norman Powell being in the same conversation as, like, Brown. Even Cam Whitmer being here is crazy. But it means an award of, like, not passing the ball. 49 So, I mean, anybody can do Here's that. Here's a chart of the best scores in the NBA and their points per touch. Some players like Jokic and LaMelo aren't going to have a crazy number here because they're playmakers. They feed their teammates more than they feed Look themselves. Curry, yeah. But for the most part, stars around the league are floating between .3 and .4 points per touch. And then here's some of our nominees for this award. MPJ is just over 0.4 points per touch, along with Cam Thomas and Jeremy Grant. Clay and Bojan are near 0.45 points per touch. And then there's Cam Whitmore, who is averaging 0.51 points every time he touches the ball. Point A five. staggering number, and one that rightfully earns him the 2024 Kobe Bryant Get It Out The Net Award. Now our next award isn't really one you want to be the recipient of. And that is the David Wesley, I just want this game to be over award. Now, most of you are probably wondering who the hell is David Wesley? Well, David is the owner of the worst individual game performance since the NBA merger nearly 50 years ago. Really? At least the worst statistical performance. On April 12th, 2001, in a game against the Nets, Wesley went zero for 13 from the field with no free throws attempted, one rebound, one assist, and four personal fouls in 29 minutes in, in 29 minutes and, and it's crazy the timing hearing about this right after the Warriors just lost out of the playoffs contention two three days ago at this point when I'm making this video like clay you mean to tell me so oh <laughs> no you mean to tell me I think this nigga clay Thompson low-key pulled a smart one too he was about four shots away from holding the NBA record of having the actual worst game in NBA history. Clay, for fucking, bro, for sure knew this shit, bro. For fucking fact, knew this going into halftime in the locker room. Once he noticed that he didn't hit not one of his shots yet, there's no way you can sit up here and tell me he didn't know that this, uh, you know what I'm saying, he was on, a, uh, on the verge of basically breaking his record. This shit, bro, this would have been crazy, especially if somebody was able to, like, let me notice right then and there when I was reacting to it live on stream that Clay, you know what I'm saying, was close to breaking the worst game of the world. Because it's one thing going just 0 of something from the game. But I ain't even going to lie, even 0 of 13, I thought it would have been like 0 of 21. 
Clay was four shot, four more missed shots away from holding the NBA record. He definitely knew he was reaching that and just probably stopped shooting midway in the game. Anybody that watched the full, because you know I don't watch full sports games because I have a life. The ones I was watching the full game, did Clay like try to aggressively like shoot the shots that he wanted, or was he just straight up clamp and every time he had a chance it was open, he shot the ball, he missed. So. Earning himself a game score of negative 11.7. Still, to this day, an NBA record. And so it's no. only fitting. Oh. My, uh, one of my goats in the NBA, from the, in the NBA, Steve Nash, is on his list. A lot of these players, it's not surprising, though, that they're, you know what I'm saying, like, on this list, though. I mean, like, bro, Adam Morrison, this shit is hilarious. Who the heck, bro? I mean, like, bro, Larry Hughes, yo, from the Cavs, bro. At one point, they thought that that was going to be LeBron's, like, best duo. It was, like, 2000, like, four or five-ish. You know what I'm saying, Eric? Darius Miles, bro. Yo, that we named the award for the worst individual game of the season after him. And for this award, there's one clear cut winner. On December 8th of this season, in a game against the Cavs, Duncan Robinson went 0 for 7 from the field, 0 for 6 from 3, logged 0 rebounds, just 1 assist, with 6 turnovers, 4 personal fouls, and 1 singular point from a free throw. <laughs> this left Robinson with a game score. Two-way ass can, bro. Oh my gosh. By far, the worst bro, individual. I ain't even gonna lie. I'll literally be in the league right now, bro. Yo, I'm dropping off Duncan Robinson 11 to 1 in the court, bro. Man, I had one point. Season. And I'd rather have I'd rather have zero points than one point. That's crazy as hell. Worst performance since the NBA merger, which earns him a runaway victory for the David Wesley I Just Want This Game to Be Over Award for the worst game of the 2023-2024 NBA season. The next award we will be handing out is the 10th Man of the Year Award. Now, as the name suggests, Tenth it's man. similar to the 6th Man of the Year Award, but instead of going to the best player off the bench, this award is for the best and most productive player in the league who is way down the rotation and specifically plays less than 20 minutes a game. You can look at it as the best, worst player in any given team's rotation. And sure, there's nine players on their team who will see more minutes than them on a game-to-game -game basis, but a great team always needs a great 10th Man. And for this award, our nominees are Mo Wagner, Kevin Love, TJ McConnell, Jonathan Isaac, Jalen Smith, and Luke Cornett. And here are some of their notable stats throughout this season, like minutes per game, estimated plus minus, win shares, and their average game score. All six of these guys are playing way above the rotational spot and could very well be the first man off the bench on some teams, even a starter on some teams. But maybe their value comes from them knowing their role as the 10th man and playing it so well. Bro, and although all of these man guys are just crazy, bro. Serving, the 10th man of the year award goes to TJ McConnell. That's like one of those awards if they end up having that, bro. You just get, you just like, bro, I don't know how to be usually announced these NBA awards. Like, because I've never, like, I obviously never watched a full even NBA award. Like, you know what I'm saying? And it's in, in this thing, usually, we usually react to like the highlight clips of it. Um, if they like have it in a room, these are one of these awards where you have to like come in like a ski mask. Like you can't even show your face. Like you're a tenth option on a team, bro. Like nigga, that, that's not even something well, to brag had about. An interesting year. If you were to look at his numbers over the last few months, you wouldn't even think he was eligible for this award since he's filled more of a sixth man role over the last couple months. But at the beginning of the season, McConnell was out of the Pacers rotation altogether on many nights. Logging eight DMPs in their first 30 games and playing brief five to 10 minute stretches in others. But anchoring the Pacers' second unit on offense and providing much needed relief for an injured Tyrese Halliburton, McConnell played himself back into the rotation and back into a valuable position for the team. In fact, he has been playing so well since the All-Star break, averaging 14 and five a game on 61% true shooting in what? under 20 minutes a night, that he has played himself from hardly even in the rotation to one of the best backup point guards in the entire league. And for this, TJ McConnell is our 2024 10th man of the year. Okay. Now our next award is a fun one and one that the NBA should add in the future. And that is the Allen Iverson Ankle Breaker of the Year Whoa. Award for the most electric display of handles this season. And here are the nominees. Miles McBride That'll makes be Evan fun. Mobley touch That'll bring move. back like super serious ankle breakers too. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, I think we've seen that too recently. I can't I cancel him. Mobley dude. Somebody give Dylan Brooks a map. <laughs> hey, look at Curry, man. Where are you going, Brooks? 
toxic ass mid player. Owned by Curry. Alan Burton drops the rookie. Damn, not the man uh Thompson. Thompson twins. Halliburton doing this in the playoffs, though. Brandon Ingram puts Jordan Nuara in a spin cycle. Oh, what the fuck this happened? They did a football move the wrong way. Lonnie Walker cooks the Celtics defense. Walker guarded tightly by Pritchard. Spins around and weaves through and finishes. Now all of these plays were disgusting. It's hard to choose just one. But the 2024 Allen Iverson Ankle Breaker of the Year Award goes to Steph Curry for leaving Dylan Brooks yeah! Not twice, but three times in the same play. This game happened in the first week of the season and really kickstarted the year in a big way. Brooks was on his villain campaign all summer and in their third game back, Steph does this to him. One fan commented on this ankle breaker saying, Steph could have shot that off the dribble comfortably, but the pump fake was solely for the purpose of <laughs> And I'd like to think there's some truth to this. That's just goat so material, that, bro. Steph is the winner for the Ankle Breaker of the Year Award. The next award we're handing out today is the Prime James Harden One-Way Player Award for the best offensive player in the league this season. Oh, the NBA okay. has a Harden Defensive the Player of the Year Award. They have the Most Valuable Player of the Year Award. But they don't have an Offensive Player of the Year Award. So let's give one out. But there's a bit of a twist to this award because it's not for just the best offensive player in the league this season. It is specifically for the player who had the largest gap between their offensive excellence and their defensive liability. Going against everything we've been taught, this trophy will be the award for the player who loves to play offense but can't play defense worth a lick. And our nominees for this award are Tyrese Halliburton, Steph Curry, Trey Young, Jalen Brunson, Tyrese Maxey, and Damian Lillard. Now, intuitively, I think we can all have a good idea of who should win this award. Curry. But statistically, there's a really comprehensive way we can go about determining the winner here. And that's by using crafted NBA's offensive plus minus and defensive plus minus metrics. These two metrics factor in a ton of different variables, like shot quality, turnover rate, offensive load, and creation on offense, and also things like forced turnovers, deflections, fouls committed, and defensive versatility on defense. They then take these numbers, rate every player based on the these categories amongst every other player in the league to find their overall league percentile. This season, here's a player who has a crafted offensive plus minus in the 97th percentile, so he's really good on offense. And he has a crafted defense plus minus in the 25th percentile, so he's considerably bad on defense. Any guesses on who this player is? It's Damian Lillard. And the gap between his offense and defense isn't nearly as big as some other players. This is Jalen Brunson with a 99 on offense and an abysmal 14 on defense. Still not nearly the worst. Here's Halliburton, Tyrese Maxey, Curry, and the 2024 James Harden One-Way Player of the Year Award winner, Trey Young, who is in the 96th percentile on offense and is in the zero percentile on defense, making him one of the best offensive players in the NBA and literally the worst defensive player in the NBA. Wow. A gap this big is truly remarkable. For perspective, Luka Doncic isn't much of a defender even on his best day, and his offensive <laughs> to defensive gap is just 42%. Trey Young is an anomaly, and for this, he shall be rewarded. Now we have one more award to give out here today, and this is a real special one. We all love a player who can change a game, ignite his team, do all the dirty work, and not have to score the ball to make a difference throughout a game. These kind of players are a different breed and rarely get the credit they deserve, let alone an award. So let's give them one. For our last award, we have the Dennis Rodman I Don't Need the Ball to Make a Difference Award for the player yeah, who leaves sense. their mark on every game without really needing to score all that often. This award is pretty much the opposite of See, the I think Brian. this type of award Draymond Green would definitely eat. Yo, he'd have... Three peats in this award. Yo, NBA gotta be tuning in to Jimmy High Roller. Get it out the net award. Where those guys find their value in getting straight buckets, these players find their value in everything else. And our nominees are Jonathan Isaac, Yusuf Nurkic, Isaiah Hardenstein, Draymond Green, yes, I knew Alex it. Kruger, I got real knowledge. and Herb Jones. Draymond Here gotta win some it. numbers that will help us determine the winner of this award. <coughs> Usage percentage, their estimated plus minus, their crafted defense plus minus, and their estimated wins. 
And according to these metrics and his impact on the court, our winner of the Dennis Rodman I Don't Need the Ball to Make a Difference award is Isaiah Hardenstein. Despite wow. scoring just 7.8 points per principle. game on 11.7% usage this season, Hardenstein has an estimated plus minus of plus 4.7 which ranks 14th in the entire league this season. His defense is also in the 99th percentile, putting him in company with some of the most effective defensive players in the league. And his near bro, eight I'm points dropping a game dirty are coming off of exclusively cuts and rolling to the basket. So even when he scores, he's still filling his role as an absolute workhorse. An underrated passer, plays really well off the ball on both offense and defense, high energy, high motor. The dude is never afraid to go up and contest against anyone coming down the lane. And he has been the anchor to one of the better defensive units in the league this season. And for that, Isaiah is our 2024 Dennis Rodman I Don't Need the Ball to Make a Difference award winner. And there oh. you have it. Eight new NBA awards I just made up. And the eight well-deserved. You know, the, bro, the NBA going to take at least two of these things in the next, like, five or ten years, bro. Winners. Power only is uh, 10%. If you could add an award to the end of the season, what would it be? And who do you think would be the recipient? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, until next time. Until next time. What do y'all think about these awards and who uh, and shall win it? Until next time for Power